Let's talk about a few other things with laparoscopic surgery. First of all, let's talk about the advantages. There was a study done that showed that the patients felt ill after the procedure more from the body's inflammatory response to the size of the incision than to the surgery itself. So you can see how laparoscopic being minimally invasive is obviously going to be less traumatic for the patient. They're going to recover more quickly. They're going to heal better, faster, and it's going to be more advantageous when they can do that. The other thing is there's less manipulation of the bowel. So this reduces the amount of ileus that the patient may have post-op. And one of the other huge advantages, I think, back in the old days, Yes, I was around in the old days, but in the old days when a patient had a very low rectal or very low sigmoid tumor, they couldn't re anastomosis. So this person, they would have to resect it abdominally, then they'd go down and they'd take out the rectum below and the patient would end up with a permanent colostomy. Well now, thanks to the minimally invasive surgery and the EEAs, these patients no longer have to live with a permanent colostomy. They can go in, they can do the resection, they can use the EEA, and this patient now can have more normal life than, than they would have had years ago. Let's talk a little bit about the gases used in laparoscopic surgery, and not just laparoscopic in the OR. One of the things, just FYI, is that nitrous oxide is going to be avoided whenever the bowel's involved in a procedure because nitrous oxide likes to live in free spaces and open spaces. So the bowel absorbs it and then it's in the lumen of the bowel and the bowel expands. And then it would be difficult to do procedures and laparoscopic it would be difficult because now you're gonna have the bowel expanded in the abdomen and making it more difficult to see. The other gas that you can hear a lot about in laparoscopic procedures is the carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is used because it's non-flammable and obviously using cautery, you're not going to want to have the flammable gas inside the abdomen where it could cause a, an explosion or a fire. So they use carbon dioxide. But if you think about carbon dioxide in soda, think about how when you have that in your mouth, how irritating that is and how the bubbles, you can only hold it in your mouth for a certain amount of time until it really gets uncomfortable. Well, I worked with a surgeon who believed that these laparoscopic patients post-op may have some shoulder and chest discomfort. And I was always told it was from pressing on the phrenic nerve. But this doctor believed it was more from the irritation caused by the carbon dioxide. In either way, it's always a good idea to go ahead and suck as much out with a suction irrigator at the end of the procedure when you're ready to close and you're gonna pull the trope before you pull the trocars out to go ahead and suck out the toxins that are in the smoke that's inside and to suck out the carbon dioxide. And it's better to suck it out under visualization than to try and vent it through the trocars and push in on the abdomen because then you may be pushing the trocars into who knows what. Now, if you're using, switching gears here, if you're using a camera that attaches this side of the bed, a camera holder, excuse me, that attaches this side of the bed and that is non-sterile, so you have to put a camera drape on it. I used to just put the camera drape, camera holder on and put it all the way down. But what I found with that was, then I'd put the bag on and I always like to leave a fold at the bottom of the bag, a little extra room, because the bottom of the bag is going to be touching the unsterile field. So if you leave a little fold above that, then you have a little room to pull that down once you get the fenestrated drape on. But back to, I used to have the camera holder all the way down and it telescopes in on itself. The problem with that was that when they go to do the procedure and they pulled out that telescope, now there was tension on the bag. And that tension would sometimes cause the bag to, the handle of the camera holder to pop through when the tension got too much and then we'd have to cover it up and it was contaminated. So in order to avoid that, I now leave the camera holder out extended so that when I drape it there's extra room and then I don't have to worry about that tension and it being split. Now if you have that situation that you're draping a camera holder like that you have the camera drape on now you're putting on the fenestrated drape. Well you don't want to just drop the fenestrated drape off the side you want to make sure you hold the bottom half so you've got the drape in both hands here say the poles in between here 
So this one you're putting over the arm, but don't drop this side because if you do, it's not around the pole yet. So you don't want to drop it because you want to hold it, bring it up around the pole because you don't want to bring it back up once you've dropped it down. Bring it around the pole and then you can pull it out and then you can let it drop. And then you drape around the pole with more. 